another podcast episode if you are listening on any of the podcast streaming uh, platforms as well as you may be watching this live on YouTube. Uh, so today I'm going to I'm going to have a short but very informative podcast episode regarding some changes um, in the um, the New Jersey realm of real estate in regards to foreclosure as well as financial distress. Um, I know a lot of people never really want to deal uh, with uh, that matter, but of course, financial distress is real. And um, I want to start off with a very sad story um, that happened here um, in New Jersey. A family uh, for um, wife uh, committed suicide as well as killed her husband and her two children. Um, it is not um, a matter to, um, to exploit, but it's to bring awareness to what happens when individuals um, start to face things that they feel like they can't control. And, you know, of course, I don't know this woman. I don't know what she was going through. But basically, she was facing foreclosure here in New Jersey, um, her and her family. And her house got foreclosed in October of last year, 2023. So um, right before the sheriff, I believe, came to the home because in New Jersey, um, although New Jersey is a judicial state, and I'm going to go into that, um, you know, further in the podcast, um, with it being a judicial state, what judicial means is that New Jersey is the state where with a judicial foreclosure in a judicial state like New Jersey, a lender has to go through the courts to get the okay to foreclose. During that process of the lender going through the process to be able to foreclose, a homeowner can, will be getting numerous notices in regards to um, the, the process of the foreclosure. And so, like I said, don't know this woman, don't know what she was going through, but there definitely seems to be um, a case of some type of mental breakdown that occurred that it seems to be that the family went through so much financial distress that she decided to kill her family. So it's very sad. Uh, two young daughters. A few years ago, I want to say maybe sometime in 2016 or what have you, and you can actually do a Google search. I know it'll come up somewhere. I did an article um, called Debt-Related Depression. Debt-Related Depression. Now, if you're familiar with me, you know that on this channel, I talk a lot about leveraging credit. I talk a lot about leveraging credit to be able to build wealth in real estate. So let me put this disclaimer out here. Although I do talk about debt, I talk about it from a standpoint of it is not for everyone. Unfortunately, we live in a time and space now here on the internet where a lot of people have glorified and sensationalize the idea of leveraging credit. But I always tell clients that leveraging credit is, I want to say, similar to, especially when you pair it with real estate. You're literally using unsecured debt and you are pairing it with secure debt. And that is an advanced strategy. As simple as people want to make it seem like, oh, it's just a credit card. And to be honest with you, the information of business funding is so skewed that anyone who has been in this industry like myself and many others, prior to 2020, business funding was never just glorified personal credit. That is what it's became now. Now you have people who have disguised business funding as really just personal credit on steroids. And that is not what business funding is. 
If you ask any lender or any lending source or institution that lends in the business funding space, it is an umbrella of many types of funding. Credit cards is just one piece of it. But unfortunately, after 2020, with so many people wanting to capitalize on the idea that you can literally take unsecured money and become an overnight millionaire, the information has gotten skewed and it really has misled a lot of people. Not that I'm saying that is the case with this woman. The reason why I brought all that up is because, yes, I do talk a lot about debt. Yes, I do talk about a, a lot about leveraging credit. And I don't apologize. I tell anybody, if you're trying to create wealth for yourself and you're trying to use real estate as a vehicle, doing it debt-free is just a misnomer. It's a mis misnomer. Now, of course, you have those outliers. You have those individuals who have built an investment portfolio and did it debt-free, by all means, nothing is wrong with that. But who would want to use their own liquidity to be able to build their real estate portfolio? No one wants to do it. Like no one would would, would do that. And so these are very, this is, so when I say about leveraging credit and pairing it with real estate, it is an advanced strategy. I don't care how simple people want to make it seem like it is online. People want you to just believe that it's just a credit card. And for those individuals, it may just be that. Like I said, right now, business funding has been disguised as um, a credit card. And so you have a lot of people who are saying, I'm going to help you get business credit. But really, all they're doing is helping you rebuild your credit and it's personal credit on steroids. Please. I understand. <laughs> I've, I've been in this industry for a long time. I do understand the impact personal credit has on business funding for all the know-it-alls who feel like, oh, well, you have to use your, business, your personal credit. Yes, I do know that. But what is sad is the misinformation that has been um, pushed on the internet that will confuse a lot of people which leads me back to the topic at hand of what I'm talking about with financial distress. A lot of people, the fact that I have, I'm in the space of real estate, I know the I know what the difference between judicial and non-judicial states are. Why? Because I do real, uh, invest in real estate notes. And by being a real estate note investor, it is very important that you understand the difference between a judicial state and a non-judicial state. With that being said, New Jersey is one of the hardest states to get foreclosed on. Um, the law is very, um, uh, uh, very forgiving in terms of not that it's going to eliminate the debt that you owe to the lender, but the law has been really there to protect the homeowner. And but unfortunately, a lot of people do not know that. And when you are under a lot of financial distress, you're dealing with debt-related depression. Like I said, I've wrote many pieces on debt-related depression. A lot of times, your mental capacity has gotten to a point where you just really don't know. You don't know that there are resources here in the state that could have protected that family. Which brings me to, um, as of this year, um, a law got changed um, here in New Jersey and it's a new uh, foreclosure protection program that our governor here in New Jersey, his name is Governor Murphy. I know I'm gonna have people who are gonna be watching this from all over, um, signed it into law. Now one may say, oh, is this because of a family got killed? I don't know, but if you know how laws work, you know, they first have to be a bill, they have to be presented to the Senate. So unfortunately, this seems to be something that has been always in the works. But once again, lack of information. I haven't did a deep dive on, on this law that got passed, but I have read some information. And the thing is, is that once again, it does protect the homeowner 
It allows a homeowner to have the ability to go to a sheriff cell and buy their home. But this is the this is the kicker. They have to be pre-approved for a mortgage. So it's almost oxymoronic because if a person is facing foreclosure, they've got a lot of dings on their credit report. So meaning there has been a history of late pays that have um that are listed on their credit report. How would a person even qualify for a mortgage? That's where one, you know, may ask the question. So I'm really wondering, and this is where it's so important of having information, especially in the realm of business funding. And I'm just throwing this out there because, of course, the way I approach business funding and the way I work with clients is to leverage business funding and look at it as a creative funding source. It is not just the way I work with clients. It's not just a credit card because there are a lot of creative things that can be done that can allow you to not have to fall under the perils of trying to get a mortgage if you want to save your home. Because of course, how are you going to save your home if you got to go get a mortgage? Because that's my understanding of the law. And you got a lot of dings on your credit because nine times out of 10, if your mortgage is not being paid, there's a good chance other things have, are not going to be paid. Now, of course, statistics have shown there are people who will pay their car note before they will pay their house note. Why? Because they need their car. They need their car to get around. They need their car to possibly still go to work. They need their car. So they, so a lot of times, just because they're not paying their mortgage doesn't mean that they're, um, they're, if they have a car loan, that's not being paid. But there may be other things on there. They may have, they may be dealing with so much financial distress. They may be dealing with so much debt-related depression that they may not even be paying credit cards. So now one may think, well, how will a person, you know, um, even qualify? But that is why information and knowledge is so important. So important. Because you'll, you will find investors who, who understand the difference between judicial and non-judicial. But the, the average person, the, the family who's just making a living, they go to work, they have kids, they believe in American dream to buy a home, to work hard and to save, they don't know these things. They don't know that you literally don't have to get foreclosed on in a judicial state, hence New Jersey, you know. Now, a non-judicial state, they don't have to go, uh, they don't have to go um, through the courts. They can literally work with a trustee, a foreclosure trustee, and begin the process of moving forward. There's some states here in America where a foreclosure process can go as quick as 90 days, 90 days. The average foreclosure here in New Jersey, some of them go as long as 10 years. That's just how long a, um, a homeowner can stall and have the ability to not be foreclosed on. That's why I always tell people, be very careful of just listening to people. You know, especially people who just don't know. And that's what brings me to business funding once again, because you will have people who will really think that business funding is just a credit card. I was just having a conversation with somebody a few days ago and, and they were saying, you know, they were explaining to them and trying to get an understanding of it. Actually, I just did um, a podcast episode, um, podcast episode, um, local um, podcaster here in New Jersey. Um, I'll put the links underneath this video. And one of the questions, we talked about credit in general, but one of the questions was business credit. Business credit is a very simple process if you just want a credit card. But business credit is not business funding. I don't care how sensationalized people may have made it online, um, but it's a very false narrative. It's a false narrative. 
Because if I am a business owner and my business is making over a million dollars a year and I come to you, Mr. Business Funding Expert, and you tell me the only suite of funding sources you have is a credit card, then that's not going to help me. And that's why I said the industry has been so skewed with misinformation because there are so many other financial products under the business funding umbrella that can help that business owner who's making a million dollars or more in a year. Or, and, and let's just not talk about revenue. How about in profits? Because if they're making a million dollars in profit, what could they possibly be making in gross revenue? Same way, even if on a low scale of a half a million dollars. So you're a business owner, you you know, uh, you you own a business that's making, let's just say $10 million. And you're looking for some funding that can support your business. You go to a business funding expert, what they gonna tell you? They Their suite of services is a credit card. That's all they can get. We gonna get you a credit card. No, it doesn't make sense. So that's why I tell people, be, be very careful of the information that you're getting because a lot of the business funding education is very low end. It's very um, sensationalized and it preys on people who do not know. And it almost makes me wonder, did this family get information that was not the right information? My heart hurts for the family because there's nonprofits here in New Jersey that could have assisted them. But once again, financial distress, debt-related depression is real. And, and that family may have been going through so much. The wife was mentally unstable. She had to be to the point that she kills her family and then commits suicide. So ladies and gentlemen, I, I leave you with this. I, I you know, I, I don't have no tactics, but, but I said my goal here in 2024 is to give you some context behind content. And the reason why is because I'm seeing a lot of people who've gotten hurt financially and it's a still a continuum of misinformation here in the marketplace when it comes to business funding. My goal is to be a voice to those who do not know. So I'm always going to give you context to the content. So that is all I want to leave you with. So once again, you can Google if you want more information on that new, um, that new, um, uh, the foreclosure law that just passed here in New Jersey. Like I said, just do a Google search. You'll find an article. Um, it allows you to read it. You can do more of a deep dive on it, um, as well as the um, the family. There's a lot of articles that are being circulated online of um, the family that is no longer with us who did um, have their home foreclosed on. But also, if you are that, that real estate investor um, that has considered business funding and your expert, their only suite of services is credit cards. Um, I challenge you to challenge them and and ask them, can they go deeper with just credit cards? Can, can they just go deeper? Because like I said, a lot of misinformation in the marketplace. Most people, like I said, they cannot give you no context to the content that they're sharing with you. And they have people to believe that one shoe size fits all. And that is farthest from the truth. If that was the case, we would only have one type of car. Everybody would be driving Kias. So we all know that everything in life, there is a variety. There's a variety of hamburger places. Everybody's not eating McDonald's. There's a variety of pizza places. Everybody's not eating Papa John's. And that's the same way with funding. Every business funding expert, consultant, whatever title they give themselves is not just pushing credit cards. 
Don't get me wrong, credit cards have their place. They can do their job. But if their only suite of services is personal credit paired with a business credit card, believe you me, they are really at their capacity. But that's all I have to say. But once again, it's Larelia. If you are listening on the podcasting apps, please leave me a review. Um, and oh, I, I totally forget on the podcasting episodes. What do you have to do? I think you have to subscribe or something. I, no, that's on YouTube. YouTube, please subscribe. Podcasting apps, please follow. Leave me a rating. Let me know what you think. And until the next time, if you want to learn more about me, um, all the links will be under the podcast um, platforms as well as YouTube, or you can go to www.neverloseadeal.com. Until the next time, bye-bye.